I've got a lot of fond memories of E3, you know? The Electronic Entertainment Expo, that once a year event generally held in May or June, where all the various video game companies would come together and show off their upcoming games for the next year. Nintendo, Sega, Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, Capcom, Konami, pretty much all of the video game developers that ever once had a period of being considered one of the big ones has, at one point or another, had a presence at E3. That presence tended to consist of a conference where a talking head would present their latest products, and a booth on the show floor where attendees could play demos of upcoming games. Growing up as a 90s kid who loved video games, I enjoyed a Nintendo Power subscription, and the E3 editions of those magazines were always great. They'd always feature huge sections on upcoming games, and I vividly remember being a babby dev vibrating with excitement over the whole thing. It was around E3 2005 when the conferences began to be broadcast over the internet. If there was live streams of them back then, I don't remember them, and they would have been very low quality if they existed. But websites like IGN did upload videos of the full conferences afterward for fans who couldn't attend. I remember there was a controversy during E3 2007, where the event was rebranded to focus only on professional journalism, removing all the fun fan stuff. This type of E3 lasted only two years, 07 and 08, before reverting to the original format in 2009, due to the overwhelming unpopularity of that change. It was around this time that I was watching the conferences along with a bunch of people from 4chan's V-Board, and it was a lot of fun. They'd always get so hyped and then ridiculously disappointed. The history of E3 is one littered with incredible moments, from the memes that came out of the PlayStation 3's horrendous announcement conference. It's Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Remember that one? Uh, Genji 2 is an action game which is based on Japanese history. The um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. So here's this giant enemy crab, and you attack its weak point for massive damage. Inside this body, we have added powerful and elegant system. Our development teams all around the world, in all of our studios, have been hard at work converting that technology and vision into magic. Whoops. Another exciting aspect is the ability for consumers to make microtransactions. 599 US dollars, 599 US dollars, 599 US dollars. To Nintendo of America VP Reggie fils -Aimé's awkward and hilarious appearances over the years. My name is Reggie, I'm about kicking ass, I'm about taking names, and we're about making games. Who is doing uh, what we call a body check on somebody, so today I think we'll do it with Reggie. Hi. My, you body, ready, Reggie? my body is ready. I feel just like a purple Pikmin. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. To Peter Moore revealing Grand Theft Auto 4 and showing the audience he had the logo tattooed on his arm. I've got a very important announcement about one of the most powerful gaming experiences of all time. I'm talking about a franchise that generates more excitement than almost anything else out there, not just in our industry, but in all of entertainment. With a fan base that hangs on every mere mention of the next chapter. Now it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to take my jacket off. Now some of you, yeah, you thought it was fake, didn't you? Some of you may remember this. So it's no big secret that I saved the big guns for the big guns. Some guys do rubber ducks, some guys do tattoos. So what I'd like to show you is my new addition. To whatever the fuck this was. E3 always set the new memes of the following year, at least in the gaming space. In terms of total hype generated, the most successful E3 had to be 2015. 
I know that may not be everyone else's choice. You might choose the announcement of the 360 or the PS3 or the Wii, maybe the PS4. Certainly not the Xbox One with its forced always online stuff that consumers boycotted so hard the console never actually recovered for its entire lifespan. I think people are going to love it and then they're going to understand what we're trying to create and how it links games and entertainment, the functionality of the box, some of the advantages that you get of having a box that is designed right. to use uh, an online state. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, to me, is a future-proof choice, right. and I think people could have arguably gone the other way if we didn't do it, and fortunately we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360, that's your message, if you don't, well, people don't like it? Well, if, if you have zero access yeah. to the internet, that is an <laughs> offline device. PlayStation 4 disc-based games don't need to be connected online to play. <laughs> or for any type of authentication. If you enjoy playing single-player games offline, PS4 won't require you to check in online periodically. But hey, hear me out for a minute. During E3 2015, some huge games were shown off. Fallout 4, Mass Effect Andromeda, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last Guardian, Nier Automata, Kingdom Hearts 3, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, No Man's Sky. Listen, I'm not making any statements about the quality of some of these games. Only that they were high profile enough that gamers had their balls fucking blown off by the news. To me, probably the most iconic E3 clip of all time was the reaction of the guys at Game Trailers Live to the Sony conference's one-two punch of announcing the Final Fantasy VII remake, something that we all had a feeling was coming eventually, and the return of the Shenmue franchise, which came completely out of left field. Yet you maniacs! No. What are you doing? No, Midgar looks exactly no. like that! What are you doing? If this isn't it... <laughs> what are you doing?! <laughs> <laughs> is this is it! For they are coming Jesus back. Jesus Christ. Barry. Oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no. The promise has been made. This ain't real. It's a movie. This ain't real. It's a movie. It's a movie. Oh, no. This ain't real. Oh, no. It's gotta be like a movie or something. No, no. Don't. No. Oh! Now this is very much their project. I've got my composure back. But we want to celebrate their announcement on our stage. It's Castlevania. Since this is a game that PlayStation fans have been very, oh, yeah. very what's 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 about. Dude, this is a crazy conference. <laughs> 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 E3 was at an all-time high, and it seemed like it could only go up from here. By 2016, I had begun dating my current girlfriend, Naomi, who loves video games, but had never heard of E3. And when the time came for me to introduce it to her, unbeknownst to any of us, the expo had begun its long, slow decline. E3 2016 kicked off two days after the Orlando shooting at the gay nightclub Pulse. Additionally, a Legend of Zelda YouTuber, Christina Grimmy, who was scheduled to be a part of the expo, was killed three days earlier by an obsessed fan. As a result, the event was changed drastically. Flags were lowered to half-mast, each of the various conferences opened with tributes to the victims of both events, and multiple moments of silence were observed during the presentations. Many attendees chose to wear pride pins in remembrance of the Orlando nightclub shooting. On the one hand, it is the appropriate thing to do. The Pulse shooting is one of the most deadly mass shooting events in American history. Furthermore, while E3 is about gaming and not gay nightclubs, to the wider public, it would look strange for them to not pay tribute to such a huge event that had just happened, while at the same time setting aside moments of silence for Grimmy, who died around the same time and whose death was, outside of the gaming and YouTuber spaces, largely overshadowed by Pulse. However, while this was completely reasonable, at the same time, it was also the tragedy that Wokoids exploited to worm their way in. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that the downfall of E3 is as simple as get woke, go broke. It's certainly not that. They did get woke eventually, but they did so as a consequence of going broke first, and they viewed wokeness as the final shot to pull themselves out of that hole. 
That's not to say that the E3s between 2016 and 2020 were completely bereft of value. They absolutely had their moments, both based and cringe. The final reveal of Zelda Breath of the Wild in Final Fantasy XV. The rise of Joseph Ferez as the next generation of conference meme maker, initially propelled by his appearance at the Game Awards. That one dude who constantly soyed out over Jedi Fallen Order. What's up, my fellow Jedi? I'm Greg Miller, and today we're talking Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. We've been waiting so... You can let... You know what? We're talking about Star Wars. Yeah! Give me, give me the hug, Vince. Let's get it going. Yeah. Yeah. Please, keep it going. They're making a Star Wars game. That one conference where Sony had announced almost no games and just had an elaborate music performance instead. That one YouTuber who shouted at Keanu Reeves. The feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking! And of course, we cannot forget the Ghostwire Tokyo waifu. Very excited. Let's take a look. Meet the net. Thank you! Bye-bye! But it was during this period that E3 became massively bloated. These magical moments were few and far between. They were padded out with a combination of garbage games that nobody cared about, obnoxious corpo ads that had almost nothing to do with gaming, and an increasing emphasis on LGBTQ representation and other woke nonsense. E3 2020 was the real turning point. This is when we all realized that the old E3 was finally dead, and its corpse was being piloted by Global Homo. There was an absolutely atrocious E3 segment called Games for Change, where it was only about representation. Hours upon hours of interviews with people where all they did was talk about intersectionality in gaming. Fucking shoot me. Coronavirus had hamstrung E3 2020 quite a bit, but by 2021, it was entirely a virtual conference due to the pandemic. There was only the online presentations, no show floor, and they were even more bloated with rainbow capitalist corpo woke nonsense. And by 2022, the organization behind E3, the Entertainment Software Association, decided to not hold E3 at all, since at this point, everyone could just stream their own thing online anyway. And with no physical show floor with booths that attendees could visit, was there even a point? Yeah, all the companies did show off their own games all around the same time during this not E3 2020, but that was mainly at a convention at this point. Everybody still had their shit ready to go, and with the advent of easy online streaming, it wasn't hard for companies to hire some kid to just fire up OBS on their own and reveal what they had on their own YouTube channels. Nintendo had been doing this for nearly a decade at this point with their Nintendo Direct format. They stopped having physical conferences at E3 back in 2013, opting for their own live show, only maintaining a physical presence on the show floor to present playable demos. But the people behind E3 promised everyone that in 2023, with the various pandemic restrictions safely in the rearview mirror, the Electronics Entertainment Expo would be back to full strength once again. But at this point, people just didn't care anymore. E3 was shit for years, and moving all of the important stuff to the online streams, broadcasted by each individual company due to the coronavirus pandemic, was the final nail in the coffin for the whole thing. E3 came out of lockdowns, realizing that nobody wanted or needed it anymore. Despite the grand proclamation that E3 was back, one by one, each noteworthy company announced that they were dropping out until there was nobody left. That doesn't mean that the appetite for an E3-like event had vanished, though. Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest and the German in-person event Gamescom are both booming right now. E3, though, that's dead. Nobody cares about it anymore. The name E3 once made people think of an amazing event where the next big thing was going to be announced. The gaming mecca that every kid wanted to one day attend. Now it just makes people think about drag queens who lecture you on stream about how you're a bigot because you like jiggly boobs and fat asses in your video games. People still want E3 at its core, the old E3. They still want what it was. But what it was is no longer contained within the institution that is known as E3. That essence has moved on to other locations, and the audience has followed suit. E3 will probably continue in some form, in some husk-like state, being worn as yet another progressive skin suit. But unless there's some drastic shakeup at the top level, akin to Elon buying Twitter or something, the E3 we all know and love is dead, and it won't be coming back. We will never again see the ridiculousness of an 8-foot-tall, custom-sculpted Shadow the Hedgehog statue hauled onto the floor of the LA Convention Center, a massive money sink meant to advertise the shittiest of games. I wonder where that thing ended up. Is it at the back of a closet at Sega HQ? Is it in somebody's living room? We'll never know, and we will never see its like again. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and of course, thanks for sticking around after everything else. If you want to see more of me on my side channel, The Dev Kit, my girlfriend and I just watched the Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie. If you want to see us talk about it, click the link on screen, and I'll see you over there. Have a good one, guys. I love you.